Hi everyone, my name is Father Ken Zaccanini. I'm the pastor here of this beautiful parish of St. Mary Chunsahova Parish here in New Kensington. And this is our fourth video in which hopefully we can update you with some serious information. And you can see behind me uh, the scaffolding that's been erected. The scaffolding will allow the workers uh, to work on the ceiling, which are gonna work on uh, both parts of the ceiling, the part you can see, and the other side of the ceiling that can't be seen uh, they're going to be doing a lot of work there as well. A couple months ago, we received a prayer card that was sent to all of our parishioners, uh, a prayer card to St. Vincent Fier. He is the patron saint of construction workers. What I would ask you to do is this, if you would begin to pray this earnestly every day for our construction workers. As you're going to notice during this video, most of our construction workers will be working at some very dangerous heights. And the potential is always there for any one of those workers to fall and get seriously hurt. That we don't want. So keep our workers in your prayers. If you'd be good enough now to bow your head as I pray this prayer that we've dedicated to this construction project. Dear St. Vincent Fear, I offer to you this prayer for all the construction workers involved in restoration in St. Mary at Tenstahova Church. Pray, dear saint, that they may be kept safe from harm, and that they may always have the tools and materials needed to do their job well through your intercession. I pray that each worker, no matter the task the worker performs on this project, from replacing the cross on the top of the left spire to replacing the carpet on the altar floor, that all workers feel and know that they are being watched and are being kept safe. May this project be completed free of serious construction worker injury and at the same time be completed with joy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Hello to the parishioners of St. Mary Chestahova. I'm Ray Volpat, president of Volpat Construction. And with me today is Victor. I'd like to give you an update on where we are with the repairs at your parish. Currently, we have all the protection in place and the scaffold is built. We're standing right now on the first level of the scaffold that gets us to the lower level arch. There is also a scaffold built that takes you up to the upper level arch. All of the lighting fixtures have been removed and have been sent to be refurbished. Tiedemann started this week with the plaster stabilization process Victor and I are going to discuss what that process looks like. Victor, can you tell us what the first step is that you need to do to stabilize the plaster that was damaged during the tornadic event? So first we have to set up all the safety equipment, right? Uh, up there, wiring uh, for the retractables and everything. And then we start vacuuming. We vacuum everything and then we go back and we have to check all the logging keys which the ones that are broken, we take it out. So, and then we re-vacuum everything after taking the keys. The lug and keys are what basically holds the plaster to the lath, yes. correct? Yes. So what's the next step in the process once you have the, uh, the keys, the loose keys knocked off and uh, you have it re-vacuumed? Then okay. you go ahead and apply your product, yes. correct? Uh, it's called the HPCS, so it's a consolidation. Uh, it comes on 100% uh, buckets, and we dilute it with water to 20% and 50%, which the 20% you know, has more water, so it goes through the plaster and makes way through the sand of the plaster. And the 50%, it's a heavier coat, it pushes the 20% all the way through the cracks on the ceiling or walls, wherever we're putting the product. And uh, it reinforces the plaster. And then you apply a 100%? A yes, that's the last coat. That's what connects all three coats together at the end. So you spray it like you're painting and it connects all three coats. So when you're done with the application of the third coat, what's the plaster gonna be like? It's gonna be hard, like a rock. Almost uniform. Exactly. Okay. And then the last step is to put the AD adhesive which is to put where the logging kits are not existent, then we put that to connect the plaster to the wood lab. Great. And how long do you think this process is going to take? Uh, it's always three to four weeks, depending on the size of the church, but 
I'm thinking four weeks will be done before Christmas. Great. So the next steps after that are, are obviously to repair the plaster that has been damaged. And then we would move on to do the uh, painting and the roof repairs. Um, and we can give you updates on that uh, as time progresses.